The case is painted, the parts are in, thank you so much required, and now it's time to put it all together to create the ultimate Windows XP gaming build, so let's do it shall we? So starting off with the motherboard and CPU, right here we'll be using the exact same thing we used before. Now the board itself isn't anything too special, just an old gigabyte model, but the CPU is a Phenom 2 X4 940, a quad core CPU from 2009. Now while even back then this thing wasn't the fastest compared to something like Core i7 from Intel, it was still good enough and still has adequate performance even to this day. So this is going to be the heart of our system. And now for the cooler, we actually have two different options because Be Quiet sent over two different coolers. So uh, thanks guys. Though seeing how one of them has a 130 watt TDP and the other has a 160 watt one, well, I guess you know which one I'll be going for. I should not have done that. So this right here is the Shadow Rock TF2. It is a top flow cooler, which means it looks like this. Now, isn't that a pretty little cooler? Also, um, I didn't realize this thermal paste already on it, so I put some on my finger. Oops. Now, while I'm doing all of this, I should probably explain exactly why I decided to go for a top flow cooler in the first place instead of something more, you know, traditional. And that is simply because of the nature of the motherboard. Motherboards at that time had no consideration for VRM cooling. So a large area top flow cooler like this one will not only cool the actual CPU, but also the area around it, which for a motherboard like this is going to be really good. Another thing is that in this case, you can actually mount fans on the side panel. And there's also space for one tiny 80 mil directly in front of the CPU socket. So that provides some great intake for a top flow cooler like this one. And while the mounting system isn't too bad on this, Be Quiet have definitely come a long way in the mounting system since the days of this thing. Now that the cooler is in, there's one more problem left, and that is that four pin fan headers are kind of a rarity on this board, i.e. there's only one. So I just got this little adapter thingy so we can actually have more than just one four pin fan connected for the entire system. And now we can finally add everything else that's exciting into this PC. Starting with a graphics card. This is the GTX 295, a dual GPU NVIDIA graphics card that is an absolute beast. So when it comes to graphical horsepower from that late aughts era, I'm sparing no expense there. Even back then, this card was like massive, but nowadays it's like, what, half of a 3090 Ti? Uh, well, that's an issue. I can't fit the other fan in there. Looks like I have to do the whole thing over again. Okay, graphics card is in again, but we still have two more expansion cards to add in. The first one is this glorious looking Sound Blaster Odigy ZS2. I did a whole video on this thing, so you better check it out. It's gonna be up in the iCards. The last one is just a simple PCI USB card, because uh, why not, I guess. The hard drive for this PC is just a very simple Seagate Barracuda one, IDE obviously. Now for the front panel we actually have two things. Firstly is this beautiful Sound Blaster interface that works with our sound card and the second is just an optical drive though it's SATA rather than IDE. And now I think we can finally start mounting our Be Quiet fans in here. We're going to start with this one right here which is going to take all that hot air away from our PC. Our second one is going to go right here at the front and it's going to be obviously an intake. But before I continue there's one more thing you have to do I've been putting off and that is the front audio. The reason I'm putting it off is because it's the worst thing ever and I hope it burns. Instead of using the normal HD audio system we used to, it uses an older standard called AC97. And the other issue is that for some reason the front panel ports are all the way over here on this side of the motherboard. Okay, yeah, this is way too cramped. I'm gonna have to take out the graphics card again. Okay, so I took out the graphics card so I can see what I'm doing. But the other annoying thing is, is that they're not labeled. So you need a, a manual of some kind to actually do it. Why? Now for the power supply, Be Quiet actually sent this 850 watt Pure Power 11 FM, but I'm not tying up an 850 watt power supply into this PC. So instead I have this thing, it's the same power supply, but 550 watt instead, and it's gonna do the job rather well. Okay, now we're pretty much done. The last thing we need to do is just attach this side panel right here. And by the way, can we just talk about how cute this tiny Be Quiet fan is right here? But seeing how it's kind of bad luck to, you know, close the side panel before you actually see if the PC actually works, let's turn it on. Okay, everything is now plugged in. The cable management maybe isn't too beautiful, but oh well, what can you expect? 
it's time to see if it actually works. If nothing catches on fire, I will be very surprised. Okay. Everything's working so far. And it actually works, we're getting a display. That is amazing. It's actually happening, it's actually booting. I'm so excited for this. But it may be working, but now let's see exactly how well it works and what kind of performance we're gonna get. Let's start with one of my favorite games of all time, Need for Speed Underground 2 from 2004. And even at maximum settings, at the highest resolution the game will allow of 1280x1024, it still runs at a butter smooth 60fps with VSync on. Now it's time for another classic from the same year, that being Doom 3. And once again, at the highest maximum resolution of 1280x1024, and at the highest graphical settings, once again we get a smooth 60fps with VSync. Man, does this game look good for 2004 standards. I can't wait to blast away some demons on this GTX 295. Next up for something a bit newer, we have Gothic 3 from 2006. Now this game is special because it allows us to go all the way up to 1440p. However, at this resolution at max settings, the game struggles hard, with constant lag spikes, especially when a lot of the open world is loading in. Sadly, playable frame rates at 1440p and even just 1440p displays in general were but a twinkle in the software dev's eye back then. But even on a more manageable 1080p, the game still doesn't run great, with an average of anywhere from 30 to 40 FPS. Still, the game is very enjoyable even at that frame rate. But now we have to ask ourselves, can it run Crisis? And surprise surprise, it can't. At least on high settings at 1440p. The gameplay isn't the greatest, but still way harder than expected for such a demanding game. And then with the settings turned a bit down to something more reasonable, the game's actually fairly playable, reaching almost 60 FPS. That GTX 295 is really doing a good job here. After so long, it's finally finished. We know when I first got this PC all rusty and with a graphics card that literally caught on fire when I was trying to restore the thing, I did not expect that I would go on such a journey on YouTube just to restore this thing, but it was great and I hope you enjoyed it as well. I also love to thank Be Quiet who supplied a lot of parts for this build and if you want to buy any of them then our Amazon associate links are going to be down in the video description below. And by the way, if you like retro builds like this one, I'll be doing another one very soon starring the legendary Intel Core 2 Extreme series. So definitely subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. And if you want to help me restore more PCs in the future then the best way to ensure that will happen is to support us on Patreon because even just one single dollar month truly goes a long way while you get awesome perks as well. I'd also like to thank my existing patrons, Gavin Burns, Ryan, LKB, Max Sumner, Shane Ulcroft, Lansby, and Jesse Herbman. Thank you guys so, so much. Support truly goes a long way. Dan is also going to be our Discord server, our merch store, and our social media links as well. But anyway, that's about it, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember, subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.